te whare e tūnei, te marae e tā koto ana, tēnā koroa, e ne mātei māha, haere, haere, haere. Nā tangira whenua o tēnei rohi, o nā te whātua o ai rāka, tēnā koutou. Tātou nā kānohi e hui mai ana, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā tātou katoa. Um, good morning and thank you for that welcome. It is genuinely my pleasure to be here, ultimately as... Uh, the Minister for Arts, Culture and Heritage, to welcome you to the Power of Inclusion Summit. Um, two days of ideas and discussions that I'm sure is going to stimulate action and contribute to a global conversation around equity and inclusion in the screen industry. So no pressure there. If you could just solve the problems for the world, that would be amazing. Um, as I speak to you today, though, I'm, I am aware that I'm, I'm not of your world, so to speak, unless you count my very brief uh, attempt at amateur dramatics via the Morrinsville Little Theatre, um, which left me with a lifelong passion for the arts and a lifelong disdain for Gilbert and Sullivan. Um, <laughs> but I may work in a completely different area to you, but we do have some things in common, I would like to think. You know, a passion for trying to create change through storytelling, um, particularly male-dominated professions, and stereotypes, lots and lots of stereotypes. You know, I still remember my first year as a member of parliament. In fact, I remember once going to an event alongside uh, a group of colleagues who it would be fair to say had been in the profession a lot longer than I had. And I'd not long walked into this large um, meeting room and stood amongst the other MPs when the meeting organiser came over and asked me how my male colleagues uh, had their tea and whether or not I could help prepare it. Now, I'm a particularly hands-on type of person. I have to say, I don't know, perhaps it's my, my Morrinsville stock. I didn't really bat an eyelid of, at, at that. I just went into the kitchen and started helping prepare the tea. And I had not long been in there when they asked me how long I'd been the secretary for MP Phil Goff, <laughs> that I realised that I was there for a very other reason, another reason. Now, it's fair to say that that is, one of, that is actually one of my tamer anecdotes and the one that actually makes me cringe the least um, of all of the ones that I have, but I'll save the rest for another time. We all have yarns, and what we need is ultimately a time and a place where these yarns are just that, they're, they're stories that are confined to some history books, and industries where we'd never hesitate to tell our kids that they should aspire to be and work in the places where we have, because they'll be valued. That surely is our collective aspiration and our collective goal. But it's not just about our workplaces. Now, our world is rich and diverse, and we need to see that reflected in both of our industries. And we need to see it reflected both on screen and behind the screen as well. Of course, when we talk about inclusion, we are, of course, also referring to the full spectrum. We're referring to ethnicity, gender, physical ability, and sexual identity. Basically, we're talking about New Zealand being fully and completely represented in places we showcase ourselves and our stories. In the words of the American writer and activist, Rebecca Solnit, quote, we are as a culture moving on to a future with more people, more voices, and more possibilities. We live in a time when traditional modes of storytelling and content production are being disrupted, and ultimately that is happening because we need that disruption. There's perhaps no better example of this than the fact that a film in which an actor slash director of Maori and Jewish descent plays Hitler recently received standing ovations and won the People's Choice Award at this year's Toronto International Film Festival. Of course, this process has been happening incrementally over the past few decades thanks to industry initiatives and the foresight of some really visionary sector leaders who quite frankly put their heads above the parapet. But it's time to take stock of how far we've come and to chart the course for future action. Now if it sounds like I'm going to do that in one speech, I hate to disappoint you, instead that challenge is ultimately over to each of you. But first I would like to take the opportunity just to highlight some of the work that's already been done here in the New Zealand screen sector. Not to sit on any laurels, but to assess where we are and ultimately where we need to go. 
our country is often seen as a leader in the global conversation around equity and inclusion, and I know the New Zealand Film Commission has really been committed to empowering greater inclusion and diversity. In June last year, I was really pleased to see them launch its 125 Fund to mark 125 years since Kiwi women fought for and won the right to vote. It was designed to encourage more women to submit funding applications, and the fund offered an investment of 1.25 million each for projects in which the director and at least one key creative uh, is a woman. The recipients were announced in November, and I am excited to see these three female-led projects come to life. In fact, one of the three films selected, The Justice of Bunny King, has just started shooting here in Auckland and features one of our stars, Thomas and Harcourt uh, McKenzie. Now, looking at the trends in the film sector more broadly, it's clear that gains are slowly but surely being made for female filmmakers here in Aotearoa and not before time. In the 2018-19 financial year, 57% of feature film projects that received funding from the Film Commission had at least one female director attached. In the same period, 93% of feature film projects receiving Film Commission funding had at least one female producer attached above the five-year average, which is generally 69%, and 62% of these projects had at least one female writer attached, which is 12% above the average. Now, we do need to be honest. These figures are signs of progress, but I would be doing everyone here a disservice if I don't acknowledge that we're coming off a low base. As we all know, there are still many barriers to women entering and thriving in your industry. And I'm sure there will be much discussion here around how to create a more fair and equitable playing field for all. That does need to start with the notion of safe working environments, addressing unchecked power imbalances, and the basic principle of everyone being treated with respect. Very few industries or workplaces can say they are free of these issues, including mine. But I hope we are all in a position to speak openly about the problem and to seek to address it. As with most industries, we should also speak frankly about the issue of the gender pay gap. While New Zealand's film sector has one of the lower gender pay gaps in the world for full-time workers at 9.3%, any pay disparity is unacceptable and frankly, completely unjustifiable. Now, I'd be keen to hear your insights on how we address that within the sector, while we as a government seek to do the same across every other industry in New Zealand. But we all know that inclusivity extends well beyond issues of gender. In order to have a truly inclusive industry, we must also support and cultivate the voices of communities whose stories have not been traditionally told as often as, frankly, they should. Here in Aotearoa, Māori storytelling traditions are deeply ingrained part of our culture. From the tales of Maui to the many examples of dynamic film, television and web content that are being made today, it's no coincidence that the first ever New Zealand feature film, Hini Moa, was made in 1914 and of course told the story of and legend of Hini Moa and Tutanakai and many of the most successful and highly regarded films tell Māori stories including Utu, uh, Boy, The Dark Horse and Waru, to name of course just a few. Now these stories not only seek to challenge and reflect a major part of who we are as a people, they are also what makes us unique on the world stage. The New Zealand Film Commission has a commitment to partnering with Māori filmmakers. A key plank uh, for this is, of course, the Māori screen strategy. In its first year, this has met its target of 20% of all feature film production and development spend going to projects with a Māori creative in two out of three creative roles. And it has seen increased engagement by Māori filmmakers and projects with Māori content in each funding round. The Commission also has developed additional opportunities with Māori filmmakers that we rolled out in the next financial year, and these include Rangatahi Youth Development Fund, a Te Reo Māori Development Fund, Māori Feature Film Fund, uh, and of course, uh, a mentorship project, uh, program uh, that's aimed at mentoring and supporting Māori producers, directors, and writers. My hope is that through all of that work, we will see more films in Te Reo Māori as well. Uh, as I'm constantly reminded, uh, we cannot just confine ourselves to spreading the reo just through Tewiki 
uh, Te Reo Māori through uh, Māori Language Week, it needs to be something we pledge ourselves to 365 days of the year. At the same time this strategy was launched, the New Zealand Film Commission also announced a new diversity fund. That's ultimately aimed at trying to deal with the imbalances uh, that we have in terms of currently underrepresented groups, and I'd include in that Pacifica and also LGBTIQ. According to a recent report from the Gay and Lesbian Alliance Against Defamation, less than a quarter of Hollywood films released in 2018 featured an LGBTI character. The report also found that more than half of those characters in Hollywood films had less than three minutes of screen time. Now, while the report showed improvements in some measures, there is still work to be done, and I do hope uh, our diversity fund in New Zealand will help address some of that. Alongside that, the Film Commission has also established He Ara, a development fund that's committed to presenting more Māori and Pacifica stories on screen. And in 2017, they also created a new role, the Asia Outreach Executive. And this was established to connect storytellers from New Zealand's Asian community and to raise their awareness of the New Zealand screen uh, sector and also the opportunities that exist within it. But ultimately, each of these initiatives are all about reflecting the full range of stories that we should be telling on our screens and that we should be telling with a full range of voices behind each of them. In doing so, we have to remain ever mindful of the environment and the experiences of those who are already in the industry. The New Zealand Film Commission launched a gender diversity and inclusion screen industry survey in August this year. Some of you might be familiar with it. It aims to provide a snapshot of people's experiences in the screen industry so we can identify needs and create a benchmark so that we can measure our progress in future years. Now, while the uh, results are still being analysed and due for release next year, I can share with you that it is clear across the sector the incredible passion and resilience that each person brings to their careers. Unfortunately, the survey also tells a less heartening story about the number of people who have experienced sexism, racism or discrimination in their workplace. 42% of respondents reported experiencing unspoken discrimination where they felt personally disadvantaged, 42%. Unsurprisingly, male respondents reported experiencing this considerably less than women. 76% of those who identified as gender diverse and 65% of those who identified as a person of colour said they had experienced discrimination. However, when asked about their expectations for the future, many remained optimistic that positive changes would occur in the industry. Now, we must never abandon that optimism, but we must also address the issues that many are already experiencing in the industry, so that optimism is no longer what we rely on. Now, I'm, in conclusion, really proud that this event is happening here. I'm very grateful for the opportunity just to spend a little bit of time with you. This is a conversation that needs to happen, and it's importance is attested to by the caliber of speakers and the delegates that have joined you from around the world today. Of course, such an ambitious undertaking as this wouldn't be possible without support, and I do want to acknowledge the partners for this event, in particular Walt Disney Company, the Motion Picture Association, the Hollywood Reporter, and MediaWorks. And thanks also to the many speakers who have come, uh, traveled some distance to ex uh, share their experience and insights. Enabling, ultimately, more groups of people to tell their own stories doesn't mean silencing other voices, but rather deepening the pool of our collective cultural narrative. The New Zealand scriptwriter Fiona Samuel has said, a country without its own stories is like a, ha a house with no mirror. You can't see yourself reflected and you feel lonely. Our storytellers create the mirror and bring light into the house. My hope is that all of you will continue to find joy in being storytellers, bring light into each of our houses, and have experiences that make each of you feel willing and able to encourage another generation to join you. Nō reira, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā tātou katoa.